right, all right, let's quickly move on to our subject of today transport system. All right, so where's the need for transportation? Why do we need to carry our transportation? You see, animals take in food and oxygen from their external environment. Why plant the taking raw materials necessary to carry out photosynthesis? Now look at it. Simple unicellular organisms like your amoeba carries out this material exchange through its external body by diffusion. I know you know what diffusion is already. So let's forge ahead. The size and complexity of an organism matters a lot in diffusion. The larger the surface area to volume ratio, the greater the ability of an organism to exchange materials. Okay, from what we have seen here, we can see that three cubes were shown. The unit 1 cube, the unit 2 cube, and the unit 3 cube. And if we observe closely, we will notice that when the surface area increases, and the volume increases the surface area to volume ratio decreases take for the first cube we had a surface area of six and a volume of one the surface area to volume ratio was six ratio one higher than that of unit two cube here we are having three ratio one because the surface area increased from six to 24 and the volume increased from one to eight all right and underneath the diagram you can see calculations on how to get your surface area and your volume transport system transport system transport system all right we already know that smaller organisms like the amoeba the flatworm and the hydra the use diffusion acts a means of exchange or as a means to transport materials between their cells and exchange surfaces. Now, why can't I use diffusion also? Simple. That is because my exchange surfaces and my cells, they are not one millimeter or less apart. I have an increased body size and the distance between my body cells and the exchange surfaces are wide apart. But multicellular organisms can't use diffusion? Now what do they do? What is needed? Now, here is it. Organs such as the lungs, the gills, the leaves, alongside the transport system, is being used to overcome that fault. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with the shape of you. We push and pull like a magnet do. Although my heart is falling too. I'm in love with your body And last night you were in my room And now my bed sheets smell like you Every day discovering something brand new well, I'm in love with your body oh, I, oh, I, oh, I, oh, I. Well, I'm in love with your body Looking at the mammalian transport system quickly the mammalian transport system is a complex system comprising the blood, lymph, and intercellular fluid. Of course, a muscular four-chambered heart, arteries, veins, capillaries, and a double circulation. Meanwhile, looking at the heart, the heart is a muscular organ that pumps blood through the body. It is enveloped and packaged by a serous membrane called the pericardium. This pericardium allows it to contract, thereby reducing friction. The walls of the heart is made of a special muscle called the cardia muscle. The cardia muscle works tirelessly and it can only be found in the heart. This cardia muscle contracts and relaxes continuously. The heart has two chambers, the upper thin world auricles and the lower thick world ventricles. The right side of the heart is separated from the left side by what we call a septum. From the diagram being shown here, we can see all structures of the heart, libid, okay, 
where the two large veins, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Of course, the difference between both of them is the position. The superior vena cava is laid anteriorly and the inferior vena cava laid posteriorly. They are large veins responsible for bringing blood from all parts of the body. Yeah, you can see the direction, the movement of the blood, the direction of movement using the arrows, okay? Now, the take blood from all parts of the body except the lungs. They take blood from all parts of the body except the lungs, okay? Now, you have the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins. These pulmonary veins are responsible for bringing blood from the lungs. They were used to replace the superior and the inferior vena cava. Okay? I was asked recently if the pulmonary veins and the superior vena cava, if they are both veins, what is the difference? Simple. The pulmonary veins takes blood away from the lungs and the vena cava takes blood away from other organs. And mind you, blood taken away from the lungs, they are what? Oxygenated blood, bright red in color. Okay? And now, looking at it, we have the pulmonary valves, of, of course, you know what valves, you know what valves they do. You have the triscopic valve. Okay, the triscopic valve. This triscopic valve ensures that our blood flows in a forward direction from the right auricle to the ventricle. Okay, from the right auricle through the, the ventricle. So I just put it on my lenses well so I can get grabs of what is on my screen. Okay, now you have the opposing verb which is the mitral verb not the mitral verb is also called the biscopic verb okay both verbs make sure that our blood doesn't flow in a backward direction which could be very very dangerous all right now this mitral verbs ensures our blood flow from the left ventricles okay from the left ventricles to the oracles up to the oracles all right you are at the top a right structure all right with arrows pointing upward that's what we call the aorta we call it what the aorta all right this aorta they are what great arteries that carries blood to every other part of the body except the lungs and now, what structure actually carries blood to the lung? The structure that carries blood to the lung is called words, the pulmonary artery. Okay, the pulmonary artery. Earlier, I told you that the the, the heart rather is a four-chambered heart, and this chamber is divided into what ventricles and auricles. Let's forge ahead. All right, we have um specific important structures as regards your exam. Okay, we have structure like the hepatic portal vein. Okay, this hepatic portal vein they take the oxygenated blood from the from the spleen and the gastrointestinal tracts. They take it down to the liver. They also take the oxygenated blood from the gallbladder and the pancreas they take it down to the liver all right this hepatic portal vein is very unique because it receives both the oxygenated blood and partially oxygenated blood all right another important structure is the renal vein the renal vein this renal vein they receive blood from the kidney and the ureter and they take it down to the inferior vena cover okay they receive blood from the kidney and the ureter and they take it down to the inferior vena cava of course 
the veins have accessories okay they, they they have structures also which makes work easier for them we call these structures capillaries all right these capillaries they are tiny blood vessels okay they are very tiny blood vessels that a single red blood cell cannot even fit through them properly okay now what do these capillaries do they connect arteries and veins okay they are facilitators which makes exchange of certain materials easy between the blood and the tissues all right those are the prime functions of what the capillaries okay hope you note that down Okay, looking at some um, media identification, all right, we have the cytoplasm, okay? Um, the cytoplasm includes all cell content except the nucleus. All cell content except the nucleus, okay? Now, we have a fluid found in the vacuole of plants, which helps them with... Okay, uh, looking at some important media identification, okay, we have the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm actually is all cell content except the nucleus. Okay, everything that makes up the cell except the nucleus is what we refer to as the cytoplasm. We have the cell sap. The cell sap is a fluid found in vacuoles of plants that provide mechanical support fluid found in the vacuole of plant that provides mechanical support and we have different type of body fluid okay we have the interstitial fluid your blood urine saliva semen lymph and so on okay now importantly there is a terminology used to explain the movement of water vapor or water molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration okay we call that term diffusion all right so explaining diffusion or defining diffusion rather is simply the movement of water molecules or just molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration now i don't know what diffusion is what is osmosis osmosis is simply diffusion through a semi-permeable membrane okay diffusion through a semi-permeable membrane which is the movement of water molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration through a semi-permeable membrane all right and we have plasmolysis okay plasmolysis simply is the shrinking of protoplasm due to water loss all right when you have um when you have protoplasm shrinking due to loss of water we call that plasmolysis okay now i don't know what plasmolysis is all right now i don't know what plasmolysis is what happens when the cell membrane becomes swollen and is pushing against the cell wall okay that's where turgidity comes in turgidity is when you have a swollen cell membrane pushing against the cell wall a swollen cell membrane is what pushing against the cell wall all right okay speaking of rema you will want to jot this down, all right? Now, loss of water by evaporation through the stomata of a plant is called transpiration. Loss of water by evaporation through the stomata of a plant is called what? Transpiration, okay? Now, the two most important factors here in plant transpiration is simply the plant stomata and the root, all right? The plant stomata and the root, okay? Now, Moving over to transport, okay, to conclude what we have 
dealing with okay since the beginning of this video all right we have active transport okay active transport now pumping of molecules and ions across membrane uphill against concentration gradient is what we call active transport now what's the difference between an active transport and a passive transport simple one of these transport uses energy while the other doesn't which of this transport uses energy cool active transport okay active transport simple all right now i was i was given a question okay i was given a question it was like someone was like virtual tutor virtual tutor virtual tutor i have a question for you and i was like all right all right kiddo all right kiddo can i get a question and he asked movement of minerals in your plants is by what means of transportation all right what media of transportation what process of mechanism for transport does mineral move in a plant okay okay that was rather too technical for me no it wasn't okay now minerals moves in a plant okay by two means by diffusion okay and active transport by diffusion and active transport do you know why it moves by active transport remember remember active transport is the pumping of molecules and ions across membrane of use against concentration gradients minerals okay they have ions all right and for you to move minerals in a plant you will need energy so can you please tell me what media what media process of mechanism requires the use of energy that's right active transport and this move from a region of what higher concentration to a region of lower concentration okay a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration or does it pass this through a semi-permeable membrane no it doesn't so that's why the answer is diffusion and active transport all right we'll be dealing with more questions okay we'll be dealing with more questions in jam biology as we further on with the video okay stay tuned for more videos all right as we digest biology and get you prepared for the best in jam thank you very much Thank you very much. Do what to read your books and remain your virtual tutor.